wood and shotgun on the field. Dan Sullivan with his number three. Nine cars ready to run. Green flag. They continue to run side by side out front. Mike Shagnon, the 86. Falling back into the second spot as they're three wide racing for fourth. Jimmy Bushy on the inside of the 11. Rick Frenier with the seven. Oh, there goes Ben Huff. The 29 just goes around over in turn number four. Everybody takes quick evasive action. Somebody punched one of the tires down on the inside of the track, and that's going to bring out the first yellow flag of the evening. Did not, a com did not complete a lap, so it is a complete restart. Here they come off of turn number four. Green flag. Atkins sliding back on the outside at the drop of the green flag as they're almost four wide into turn number two. Look at Jimmy Bushy go working the rim. Right along the top of the racetrack, Jim Bushy with car number 11 going to the second spot. It was a little hot going into three and four, trying to hang on to that race car. Out front, it's Mike Shagnon with the 86. Robin Wood and Jamie Begor running side by side in the middle of the pack. Shagnon continues to lead. Here comes Jimmy Bushy for second with his number 11. The 96 of Nick Lagoy fighting for that second spot. Shagnon working right up against the wall off turn number four. That opens up a lot of room down on the inside. Boy, the 96 and Bushy in car number 11. Rick Frenier with a good view of the battle that's happening right in front of him for that second spot. Shagnon continues to show the way, but he works a perilous line running right up against the wall around the top of the track. Nick Lagoy trying to get to the inside. Jim Bushy thinking about a three-wide move perhaps up there in the room. Can't quite find the room as Shagnon still leads at the strike. 96 of Nick Lagoy is there in turn number two. There goes the three of Dan Sullivan. Sullivan goes around with his three car. Looked like he might have clipped one of the tires. There appears to be some damage on the left front of his car. Either that or maybe a tire going down. It's going to bring out a yellow flag. Not sure if he maybe clipped one of the big white tires on the inside of the racetrack. Shagnon and Lagoy in row number one. Shagnon's been running along the top of the racetrack. He's pinned down on the inside. Let's see if Nick McGoy can get the top dialed in to that 96 car. Maybe he can wrestle away the lead away from Mike Shagnon. Green flag back out. Three laps showing complete. Robin Wood has a line down on the inside of Jim Bush. He couldn't quite get there. Actually clipped the back of the 11 car. Jamie Begor thinking about a three-wide move into turn number three. Rick Frenier works on top of the track. Here comes Nick McGoy from the outside of row one. He's going to take the lead away. Nick lagoy has got the lead with a 96. Mike Shagnon running in the second spot with the 86. He's got Rick Frenier at his door with car number 77, and Frenier's going to try to take the second position away. They run side by side for the second spot. Running in the fourth position is Jimmy Bushy. Battle for fifth between the 61 of Robin Wood and the 19 of Jamie Beemore. Here comes Rick Frenier around the outside of the 86 of Mike Shagnon. He'll take the second position. Jimmy Bushy's going to try to follow that same line around the outside of the 86 car. And it boxes up right behind Shagnon with the 86 as they run side by side for third. And they're still running side by side for fifth. Shagnon went again high on the racetrack into a middle line. Jimmy Bushy is sideways into one and two. Here comes Robin Wood driving through on the inside. Jamie Begor looking to get down to the inside as well. Three wide down the back stretch. Begor backed out of it. Out front, it's Nick Lagoy. His lead is three car lengths. The 77 of Rick Frenier runs in the second spot. Jimmy Bushy runs third. Robin Wood running in the fourth spot. Jamie Begor with car number 19 running in the fifth position. Sixth now, the 86 of Shagnon. Side by side for seventh between Atkins in the 68 and Huff in car number 29. Nick Lagoy's lead is four car lengths as he races off a of turn number four. Two laps to go for Nick Lagoy. Jefford Steele, 96, show of the way. Then it's the Michigan's plus 77 for Frenier running second. Here comes Jim Bushy after him. Jim Bushy moves to the inside, trying to get that second spot away from Rick Frenier. Robin Wood in the number 61 continues to run to the fourth spot. White flag is out for Nick Lagoy. Jim Bushy was sideways that time off turn number four. Nick Lagoy with the number 96. A big, comfortable cushion out front. Rick Frenier running in the second spot. Jimmy Bushy running third with car number 11. Robin Wood is fourth. Jamie Begor trying to wrestle fourth away on the outside. Checkered flag is out. It's going to be for the 96 of Nick Lagoy. Second, and look like the 77 of Rick Frenier. Third for the 11 of Jim Bushy. Fourth is the 61 of Robin Wood. And finishing in the fifth spot, Jamie Begor with car number 19. Nickel and shotgun on the field. The pistol, Patrick Dupree. Nine modifies, ready to run. Qualifier number one is under green. 
Andy Haywood in the 80, leading them off turn number two. Look out! Dan Brown skipped the wheel. He heads over towards the Jersey Barriers, gets a piece of the bunker, and that's going to ring out a yellow flag. They stacked up three wide going over to turn number two. And Dan Brown was on the outside working the rim, and he skipped the right rear tire of Jim McCollum was number five. Fire number one just about ready to take the green flag. Field comes off, turn four. Green flag is out. Yeah, good jump on the inside for the 11. Whalen is the 44. Uh, Brandon Nolan does not want to go. He's going to fall toward the back of the pack. It allows Whalen to open up five car legs on the 45B of Josh Laporte. Chad Collins moves the 22 into the third spot. Bill Joyle moves up on the inside. In the 57 car, he will take four. The superstar, Cody Myers, will move into the fifth spot in the 75 as John Michael Brissett drops back to sixth. And it's the Nolan 44 in the side eight. Ed Pelkey brings the 88D down into the infield. Bombers run single file in the qualifier. They'll go 30 laps tonight for their main event. Extra on the line. Bill Joyle's 57 now looks inside of the 22 of Chad Collins. And Joyle will take that third spot away, dropping Collins back to fourth. Laporte has closed the ground just a bit on the leader. The lead down to three car lengths. He approached the halfway point. Three down, three to go for Mike Whalen. Joyle now starting to close in on the second place car of Laporte. That's down to four car length advantage. Two to go this time by for Mike Whalen. Main 
maintaining that advantage over the 45B of Josh LaForge. Doyle running comfortably in that number three spot. Collins is fourth with a superstar fifth. Brissett sixth, Nolan seventh. And side runs eighth. White flag is out. Going to go for Mike Whalen. Whalen got the lead going into turn one on last number one. It's just Maintain that four or five car length advantage on Josh Laporte the entire race. Off turn four, checkered flag is in the air. Your winner is Mike Whalen, second to Josh Laporte. Bill Joyle finishes third, Chad Collins fourth. And the superstar, Cody Myers, rounds out the top five in car number 75. First Andy DeBute will start shotgun with the beautiful pink number 61. All right, here they come off turn number four, green flag. Terry with the 43, the 69 of Don Franklin. Don Franklin will take the lead off turn number two. They're racing three wide for the fourth spot. Luke diving down on the inside. Josh Terry stuck in the middle of the racetrack working that middle line. Here comes the 25 on the inside. There goes the 40 on the outside. Number one of Cody Benoit also able to take a spot away as he goes to fifth. Out front, it's Don Franklin with the 69. Two car length lead over Dave Rapsoy with car number 21. 25 of Kevin Booth sitting in the third position. It's Kenny Sainz. Off the pace is Cody Benoit with the number one. Sixty-nine leads by two car lengths. Kevin Booth is right off the back bumper of Dave Raptoy in the number 21 Raptoy. on the inside, Woodward on the outside. Here they come off turn four. We are under green. Look out, Woodward's 46 did not want to go. That gives Atkins the lead. No, he is sideways and flying off turn one. Holy cow. A wild ride for Brandon Atkins at the 199 brings out the yellow flag. They come off turn four. Much better start this time. Alan Drake grabs the lead on the outside in the 30 to line. He will lead the pack in a turn number one. But here comes Mr. Turd. Andrew Bordeaux looking to the inside. And he is going to dump Howard Drake back to the number two spot. The Turd is your leader. He will lead lap number one. Chris LeVere has moved the four car into the number two spot as he looks to the inside of Mr. Turd. 
Collins now fourth in the third in the 0-2 with Chris Clark fourth. Brian Archer will take the fifth spot in the 21. Drops Drake back to sixth and Woodward can see them all. Mr. Turd in the 0-8 looking to pick up his first checkered flag in quite some time. He's had some mechanical problems the last year and a half or so. And right now he's got that away running strong and up front. He's halfway. Bordeaux on the inside. Lavare moves right alongside off turn two. Up the back stretch. Lavare sticks his nose in front. Turn try to come back on the inside. It's Lavare on the outside. And the turn on the inside. Two to go. Lavare had the lead at the stripe. He will look to pull away from the brown turd as they head up the back stretch. He's put a car length and a half on the 08. Drifts a little bit high. Here comes the 08. Back for more on the inside. One to go this time by. They are just about even at the stripe. Perhaps the 08 with the cow catcher just in front. Up the back stretch the final time. Turd and Lavare race side by side with Collins and Clark together for the number three spot. Off turn four final time. Down the stretch they come. On the inside, Mr. Turd is your winner. Chris Lavare will settle for number two. Jimmy Collins gets the third spot, fourth spot to Chris Clark. And Brian Archer rounds out the top five in car number 21. Time winner on the season. Then it's Ben Huff in the 29, Casey St. Clair in the 56, Jamie Atkins in the 68, Travis Bruno in the 33, Shotgun Dan Sullivan in the 3, 18 cars, 25, last three, flag is out. Couple of Knicks making up the front row. LaVoy the 96, Haywood the 29. As they race three wide for the four spot, Vigor to the inside of Bill Twaits gets a spot. Twaits sliding back one. Out front, from the outside, it's going to be Nick Haywood to lead the first lap. Jim Bushy trying to go for the money outside. And now doing it over for that second spot. Lagoy in the 96, washes up the track a little bit. Here comes Vigor to the inside. Three wide down the back stretch for third. Vigor in the 19, grabbing the third spot away from Lagoy. Room down on the inside for Sean Duquette if he tries to get down to the inside of Lagoy's car for that fourth spot. Side of Bushy's 11. Bushy with a good run off the top of the racetrack. Haywood drifts up the track, takes away some of his momentum. That allows Jamie Beagor to close with a 19. There did even for the second spot as they race off turn number four, right behind Nick Haywood's 29. Almost even at the strike for second. Chris Haywood in the 29 showing the way. Beagor working well on the inside, tries to get the nose underneath. Here he comes for the lead. Jamie Beagor with a 19 into turn number three. Three wide almost into the fourth turn. Down the front stretch for the lead. It's going to be Jamie Bigor with a 19. Bigor has the lead by five feet. Haywood in the 29 runs in the second spot. Jimmy runs third. Fourth is Nick Lagoy. Fifth is Sean Duquette. Sixth, Tyler Terry. Terry flying to the front with his 44. Bill Sawyer works the outside. They're three wide. Bucko Branham there. Billy Twaits also as well with a 69 as they race for position. Jamie Bigor was turning some of the fastest times. practice with that number 19 car and he continues to turn fast times on the monitor his lead growing lap by lap it's now about six car lengths over Nick Haywood with a 29 Jimmy Bushy continues to run in the third spot Nick John Duquette's been working on the outside of the racetrack racing in the top five trying to take fourth away from the on the outside then Tyler Terry, who won two weeks ago, sitting in that sixth spot with a 44. Billy Twain's running right off of his back bumper. Buckle Brandon had to get out of the binders as things boxed out. Brandon going into turn number one. Let's set the field with seven laps showing complete. Vigor is the leader. Haywood runs second. Bushy runs third. Fourth is Lagoy. Fifth on the inside. Here comes Tyler Terry trying to get to that spot. Sean Duquette right there for sixth as they're three wide in a turn. Terry in the 44, LeBoy in the 96, Duke in the 18, Mike's flying off in turn number two. Down the back stretch, Tyler Terry goes to the fourth spot. 
fifth is now Lagoy. Here comes the 69. Billy Twaits running strong on the inside. Lagoy with a bobble off turn four. Three wide along the front stretch. Duquette working in the middle of the racetrack. He's sideways into turn number one. Again, they touch. Branham's down on the inside. They touch again over in turn number two. Not a lot of running room as they run three wide around this place. Branham works to the inside, finally coming through. Duquette still in the middle of the track. Here comes the 77 making contact. Renier in the 77, Duquette in the 18. Duquette sideways into turn number one. Can't hang on to it. He goes around. There was some contact with the 77 along the left rear, and that's going to bring out a yellow flag. The action's been hot and heavy for spots two through ten. Here they come off four. Green flag. Good start for Nick Haven on the outside. They're even into turn number two. Haywood trying to challenge for the top spot. Bigor, who has run very well down on the inside of the racetrack, has the lead into three and four. Here he comes off the fourth turn. He'll pull away from Nick Haywood. Haywood will try to hang on to the second spot. Moving down to the inside, Jim Bushy is there. Bushy on the inside for the 11 car. Look at Tyler Terry run to the third line, way up to the top of the racetrack. He got shuffled out there, had to get on the binders. Here comes Billy Twaits after him on the inside. Jim Bushy going for second. The 11 car, the inside of the 29, trying to take the second spot. Bill Twaits, three wide along the front stretch, back down a minute and turn number one. Jim Bushy, Nick Haywood, racing for second. Twaits there now on the inside. They will go three wide down the back stretch for the second spot. Bushy backed out with the 11. Nick Haywood hanging on to second. Here come Twaits after him on the inside. Out front is Jamie Bigor, great racing for second. Haywood hanging on to the second spot for now. Bill Twaits is running for the 69. Here comes Tyler Terry again. He's got the steam built up of the 44. Running off the top of turn two down the back stretch. Three wide into the third turn. Twaits, Haywood, and the 44 of Terry continue three wide in the fourth turn. It's going to be Terry who loses a couple of spots in that deal as he got shuffled right up against the wall. We've had contact with the front stretch. Renier with the 77, the 57 of Howard Stoner. They both go to the infield. And is that going to bring out a yellow flag? No. Frenier is rolling. Green flag stays out on the track. Bigor does not want a yellow flag now with 15 laps showing complete. Frenier will take the 77 back to the garage. Out front, Jamie Bigor's lead half the backstretch. Bill Twaits, second, third. Buckle ran on the inside. Tyler Terry running with him door to door around the track. He's fourth, but trying to get third away by working the rim. Fifth, it's Jimmy Bushy with the 11. Sixth is Nick Haywood with the 29. Seventh is Bill Sawyer with the 39. Eighth is Nick LeBoy with the 96. Robin Wood with the 61. Myron in the ninth spot. He's not been able to make a lot of progress towards the front. Sean Duquette has rallied into the top 10. He is 10th. Bill Twaits holding on to second. The racing guru. Bucko Ramsey running in the third spot. He has shared a lot of information with that guy who was working right in front of him, helped him work on that car, build that car, teach him the line around this place, and really trying to help him get that 69 faster and faster, and he's been able to do it. Bill Quaid's doing an excellent job running in the second position. Buckle Branham right behind him in third. Tyler Terry with the 44 continues to fight on the outside. Good racing from the second spot. Jamie Bigor wants it just like that. He doesn't mind him racing for a second as long as they don't chase him down. Random in the number 20 trying to find room to the inside of the 69. They're all in contact with the two. Twaits is doing a great job hanging on to the second spot. Five laps to go for the 19. Jamie Bigor is looking for his first win of 2010. At the stripe, Willie Twaits was still hanging on to second. But Bucko Random is trying to come through on the inside, get that second spot away. Down the back stretch into three. Branham puts the nose into the second spot. Twaits come back on the outside. Tyler Terry still in the mix for second as well. He watches the battle for second and goes to Bucko Branham at the stripe by three feet. Bill Twaits falling back a little bit now. Tyler Terry trying to take third away from him. Branham has declared the battle for second. The battle now is for third. Jamie Bigor continues to show the way. His lead is almost three quarters of the front stretch. Terry trying to find room to the inside. Oh, there goes Bill Sawyer spinning. Up to the top of turn number one. Sean Duquette gets a piece of him. Sawyer parked on the top of the first turn. That's going to bring out a yellow flag. With they sit in the second row. All right. 
They're quick on the throttle, off turn number four, down the front stretch, green flag. Good start for Adam, hitches down on the inside. Vigor in the 19, even right with him off turn number two. Down the back stretch, they're even into turn number three. Rubbing into the third turn. Door to door as they race into turn number four. Popsicle sticks are out. Jamie Bigor clears them on the inside. Two laps to go. Random slingshots down on the inside. Trying to get to the inside of the 19. Couldn't quite get there. Look at Tyler Terry in the 44. Tyler Terry on the outside goes for second. Jamie Bigor clear by a car link. The battle for second between the 20 of Buck O'Brien of the 44 of Tyler Terry. White flag is out. One lap to go for Jamie Bigor. Bigor leading two car links now off turn number two. He went to the top of the racetrack, a little sideways off two, but no harm, no foul. The lead is still two. And a three and four. Branham and Terry duke it out for second. That's going to be the battle. There'll be no battle for the win. It's Jamie Bigor's in the 19. Branham is second. Terry is third. Fourth to Bill Twain's. Fifth to Jimmy Bushy. Sixth to John Duke out of the 18. Seventh to Nick Haywood. And Ben Huff with the 29. And it looked like Robin Wood ninth with the 61. He's pretty happy in uh, his race car. Still has the helmet on getting congratulations from Bucko Branham. Bucko finished in the second spot. Tyler Terry still flying with a 44, finishing third. Jamie's about to get out of his car, and when he does, I know you'll give him a nice round of applause. All right, he's out of his car, everybody. Jamie Bigor, first win of 2010. Here's Jamie Bigor. Well, you had, you had an extra week to work on the race car. And I know for much of the season, that car has been really pushing up the track for you. Tonight, it really seemed to stick on the inside. Yeah, it sure did. And these last two weeks, we spent pretty near every night in the garage. And we did a major overhaul with shocks and springs. And uh, it worked out for the best. And I got to thank my crew, uh, Kyle and Chad and Timmy and Dean and Mom and Dad and my wife, Beth. And, of course, all my sponsors, Bigor Supply. Uh, Ellenbury Auto Parts, Amerigas, Agency Insurance, uh, Connor Sandpit, Big Order Seamless Gutters, Vancourt Fuels, Agency, I said those guys, uh, and Dragoons Farm Equipment, Toyo Stove, Red Jacket, and everybody else that helps me out. Can't thank you enough. Jane, we only have so much time, Jamie, before you're done rattling off all those sponsors. What were you thinking when the yellow flag came out on lap 22? I can't say that over the mic. Uh, I know what we had to do. We, we had the uh, inside lane and just hoped that we got some good bite off the top of turn two and uh, she pedaled on the way down the back stretch and we come through with a win. Well, congratulations. Uh, well learned. You had a tough guy sitting right next to you finishing in that second spot. So you certainly had to work those final three laps to get it. Nice job. Thank you very much and thanks everybody for coming out tonight. And uh, I'd like to donate you know, this race over to uh, a good friend that we lost uh, today, Mike Watts. Thanks a lot, Jamie Bigor. Jamie gets his first win of 2010. Jim McCall, four for Leon Gagno, 26 Todd Orsby, 46 for Michel Vienne. Yellow flag, way too hot. The field was screwed all across the racetrack. They want to slow down the front of the pack. The 26P is Mike Finney. The 46, and because of weather that perhaps is on the way, just a 25-lap feature event tonight for the modified Street flag. They box it up for the front row, so they'll have to hustle tonight. Five fewer laps to get to the front. Andy Haywood in the 80, Chris K.A. in the 18, dicing out front. Some cars trying to get to the front in the middle of the pack. Making 
Rick, Chris K.A. gets his first career win in a modified. When he climbs out, give him a big round of applause, everybody. He's got his helmet off. He's about to come out of the race car. All right, here he is, out of his car now. Chris K.A. wins. All right, here is Chris K.A. The smile goes from ear to ear. You've been working to get this checkered flag for how many years now? Uh, this is my fourth or fifth year in a modified, and it is tough. It is very tough. So what was the difference for you tonight? Track position is the biggest thing. And get out clean air, and you just go. And you had a pretty good battle with Andy Haywood for numerous laps, and then it looked as though Andy's car started to go away. You were trying to size him up and find the right line. Yeah, he's pushing really good out of turn four, so I figure I'd try a little slide job on him, and it worked, so kudos to me. <laughs> At any point, did you have to kind of scratch yourself or, or, or just pinch yourself and say, look, is this really me out front by about 15 car lengths as the laps are winding down? Right here is where it is. <laughs> Chris, I know you've been working at it for a while now. Enjoy this. And we can add your name now to the list of Ernie's Discount Tools Modified Winners. Congratulations. Yeah, I got to thank all my sponsors, Bogor Supply, Bush's Auto, um, everybody that helped me out. I blew a motor two weeks ago. This is a brand new motor tonight. It's going good. What can I say? Congratulations on the victory. Thank you. Chris K, everybody.
field will be halfway this time by. 15 down, 15 to go for Bill Joyle. Desitel look to the outside, trying to make a move on the 45B of the port. Josh holds on to the second spot. Desitel right there and Richter right there as well. It's turned into a good three-car battle for the number two spot. Right now, Joyle is simply on cruise control as he's got clear sailing ahead of him. And he's got 10 car lengths. Back to a good three-car battle for the number two spot. As long as those cars continue to do battle, they're not going to gain ground on the leader. Port still holding on to second. Cheese it and Richner right there. Again, the orange Cheese it mobile looks to the outside as they come off. Turn four. Again, they put the sign number eight a lap down. A couple of good three car battles going on for position for the second spot. And further back in the top ten for positions. Seven, eight, nine. Collins in the 22. The Grave in the 72. Six have been waging their own little war at the back of the pack. Smoke starting to come out of the six car of Coral. He's got a right tire down. That's why I got on the six is the right front tire is pointing the wrong way. Carl was trying to get back to the garage area. Contact with the 72 of the Grave. Brave will follow him down pit road. Ten laps remain for Bill Joyle. He was dominated this race up front. Once he got to the lead, it was all over. have the remainder of the winning 50-50 numbers. We'll read those off to you as Rob heads down for Victory Lane. So Victory Lane, and right now, appears we'll have Bill Joyle making a return visit. The Bombers have been able to go green so far for the first 23 laps. Josh Duravage is closed in to make it a four-car battle now for the number two spot. Laporte second, Desitel third, Richter fourth, and the 88 of Duravage is fifth. Bill Joyle will see the right hand of Chief Starter Weasel Bruno. No, he's not saying hello. He's telling him there's five laps to go. Five to go this time by for Bill Joyle. He has certainly made it look quite easy so far in this one. The lead gets longer as the race gets shorter. Still continue to run, 45, 36, 21, 88. They've been that way for the past 20 laps in the battle for the number two spot. Someone to lap down. And he is about to put a lap on the 23 of April Bordeaux. Two to go. The 
88 of Josh Durvash has now moved into the fourth spot. Richner trying to take that fourth spot back. White flag coming out this time for Bill Joyle in the 57. Josh Laborde still holding on to second. Mr. Cheese, it's been right after him the entire race, but he's not been able to get by that 45B. Checkered flag out. Bill Joyle is your winner. Second spot is going to go to the 45B of Josh Laporte. Mr. Cheese and Bill Dessert until finishes third. Josh Durbach gets the fourth spot. Fifth spot will go to the 21 of Scott Richner. Sixth goes to the superstar, Cody Myers. Seventh spot will go to Chad Collins of the 22. And the eighth spot will go to the 23 of April Bordeaux. All right, Bill Joyle about to climb out of his car. Win number five for Bill Joyle. About a full front stretch for Bill, who will make his way around here. He's getting uh, pretty polished in these victory lanes because he has won so many times. Bill Joyle, that win, I dare say, was almost easy. No, I wouldn't say easy. <laughs> the car, as the laps kept going, the car got harder and harder to turn. It's just a workout. It's okay when you have a front stretch lead if it makes it a little bit more difficult. You just have to focus on the marks, I would think. Just keep your head straight and go for the gold. Well, congratulations on win number five. Another fine job by you. Thank you. I'd like to thank my sponsors, Matt LaValley Logan, Bridge Street Auction Service, The Book Society Cleansing. Visit Facebook.com. Uh, Twaits Firewood, Mad River Pizza, Rosano Trucking. Thank you. All right. That's Bill Joyle, everybody, who gets it. At this point, continues to fall. Track conditions still seem to be pretty good, though. Here they come off turn number four. Green flag. Rob Favreau in search of his first career Renegade victory. Keith O'Neill has the lead off two. Look at Provost go to the inside. Chad Provost with a six down to the inside of Larry Underwood. Don Franklin works at his door, now falls in line behind Larry Underwood. Here they come off turn number four, halfway, and the leader is Keith O'Neill. Keith O'Neill takes the lead in the stripe with the zero car by about three feet. Now he'll get a good run off the top of turn number two, pull away down the back stretch. Bob Favreau running second. Chad Provost trying to fill the hole on the inside of the H2O. Robert Ford take that third spot away. Gordon. Fifth is Underwood, sixth is Franklin, seventh is Wooten, eighth is Dave Raptoy, ninth is Cody Benoit, tenth Joe Warren. Cars over in turn two, one off the track, Josh Terry, the other involved, Kenny St. Germain. St. Germain rolling, Terry. Zero, Rob Favreau with the 27th. On the hammer now, here they come down the front stretch, green flag. Three wide up into turn number one. Working the rim of that third line, Cody Benoit. He's going to run out of rope though. And they get on the binder. Out front, here comes Provost for the lead. Chad Provost to the inside. Keith O'Neill drifted up the track along the back stretch, sliding up towards the wall. Chad Provost to the right. Here comes O'Neill on the outside, back to the point. They go back and forth for the lead. O'Neill working on the outside. Provost hooked up on the inside. Oh, O'Neill sideways towards turn number four. Gets a good run though on the top. And the strip is six left. Keith O'Neill not going away without a fight. Here's where he's strong. Off the top of two. That's where the zero really gets a good run. Here's where the six is hooked up. Off turn number four is where he's able to pull a wave down on the inside. Here they come back to the strike. O'Neill back after him on the outside of turn number two. Provost will hold the lead this time. Maintaining the lead into turn number three. Even now into turn number four. Again, O'Neill will go to the top of the racetrack. Provost will pull away. He clears the lead. Kevin Boogan, seventh working on the outside, Cody Benoit, eighth Dave Raptoy, ninth is Larry Underwood, tenth is Lance Raptoy, eleventh Joe Warren, twelfth is Lonnie Rivers. Chad Provo starts to check out, looking for his second win. The lead is up to five.
five car lengths into turn three. Keith O'Neill in the zero. The handle start, uh, appears to be going away a little bit on that zero car. Robert Gordon is pulling him in. Bobby Benoit continues to race track. Ryan again fifth away from Big Daddy Don Franklin. Benoit goes to the fifth spot off the top of turn number two with the number one car. Benoit to fifth. Sixth is Franklin. Seventh is Putin. Eighth is Dave Raptoy. Ninth is his brother Lance Raptoy. doubt that this race car is probably the fastest thing in this division right now. How did it get so fast? Uh, I don't even know how. Cody Boyd, he's the first one I want to thank for setting the car up. Lonnie Rivers, Archie, uh, A&L Auto, Big Sows, Laporte Auto, Eddie Drake for painting my car, my dad, Johnny, Lou, everybody that's helped me. I want to thank everybody that's helped me. It looked like uh, for you, you had to pick your spots. You managed to avoid a couple of tangles that uh, happened around you. But this car really works wherever you want to put it. Yeah, it does. It, I mean, the best car I ever had here. I want to thank Mike Watts' family. Mike Watts for taking the pictures and everything for all these years. That's who I dedicate this race to. Congratulations again on your second victory. Thank you. All right. Three laps down, 12 laps remain, ready to go back racing this time. LeVere on the inside, Stone Cold on the outside, Green, flag is back out. And look at how quick Stone Cold Steve Brissett got the lead. Already had him by a car length at the start finish line, and he just starts to drive away. Now Chris LeVere has moved into the number two spot, dropping Bobby back to third. They race side by side. Fourth spot. That's a good battle between the 95 of Donor, the 02 of Collins, and the 357 of Kurt Seymour Jr. And now Collins has fourth, and he's doing a good job keeping that 0 2 right on the bottom of the racetrack. Now Donor sneaks to the outside, trying to buy the 02 on the outside. Meanwhile, Stone Cold Steve Brissett has opened up three car lengths on Chris LeVere. Speedy looks to the outside. Jamie LaFountain moves up as well. As they're three wide coming off turn three. Percent is your leader. Chris LeVere is second. Here comes Rick Doner looking to the inside of Bobby LeVere to take number three spot away. Doner has the nose in front for third. LeVere tries to battle back on the outside, but he drifts a little bit high coming off turn four. 
He will fall back into the number four spot. Here comes Collins. He'll look to take that spot away. As Collins, again, keeping it at 0-2, glued to the bottom of the racetrack. He'll battle Bobby LaVera for the number four spot. Justin Doner moves up in the one car as well. Chris LaVera has cut that lead down to a car length and a half. Stone Cold Steve Brissett. See if the 95 of Captain Thunder can gain any ground on those top two cars as we approach five laps to go. Five to go next time by. Still stone holes up front. Chris LeVere trying to close that gap. About a seven car length gap back to donor in the 95. And it's about 15 car lengths back to the battle for the four spot between Justin Donor and the one. Collins of the zero two. And the number five. Five to go for your leader. Will they get these five laps in or will rain, which is starting to get stronger, close this one before it's over? There's four had a problem and allowed Donor to take second. If it jumped out of gear again or not, that's a problem he's had the last few weeks. It's cost him a couple of victories. Brissett by three car lengths on Captain Thunder. They're going to be two to go next time by. Rick Donor looking for his fifth victory of the season. Set the points leader, trying to extend it. Two to go. They will be coming upon the lap car. Nolan Swamp. They get by him on the outside with no problem. As the white flag is on its way out. Trouble on the Chris LeVere four. He is creeping to a halt up in turn three. White flag is out. Stone Cold Steve Brissett, your leader. Rick Doner looking to take one last shot as they come off turn four. Not going to be enough. Brissett is your winner. Second spot goes to Rick Doner. Justin Doner finishes third. Jimmy Collins fourth. At the line, Speedy Brissett will finish fifth in the 0-3. So the teammates finish 1-2. Stone Cold wins it. Captain Thunder finishes second. And the third member of that gang, Justin Doner, finishes third. Rick, thanks. Stephen Brissett climbing out of his car. Win number two for Stephen Brissett. Point leader is going to increase his lead. Come on over here, Steve. Well, it, there you go. Congratulations. Let's talk about, come on over this way just a little bit. Tell me about the restart. Uh, you had, uh, I believe it was the LeVere car down on the inside, Bobby LeVere. From the outside, you were able to gun it and really get the uh, top spot. And from that point on, Keep hitting the marks. Yeah, I, I didn't know whether I started a little ahead of him or not, but I heard him go and I just stayed on it and I was like, stay behind me, Rick, stay behind me, Rick. <laughs> and then as, as Rick Donor started to close, I'm sure as drivers often do, you were probably keeping an eye on the scoreboard to see where the 95 was. Yeah, every lap that went by, I look over. <laughs> and then uh, you probably see him closing in in the rear view mirror. I was like, no, come on, let's go, let's go. <laughs> I, I didn't want him to come up on the side of me, I tell. Well, this is also going to help you increase your point lead, and uh, it's the second win of the year for you. Congratulations. Things are going real well. Hey, thank you very much. All right, Stephen Brissett, everybody, he gets his second win. He'll also increase the points. That will wrap up Motorsports Magazine from the Airborne Speedway in Plattsburgh. Modified, first-time winner, Rob, Chris Kayak.
about four years in the making for Chris Kaye, and uh, he, he makes uh, as much as he can out of uh, what he has. And, uh, I think a lot of people certainly will feel really happy for Chris, uh, the work that he has put into that race car and the people that help him out and get him out here on the racetrack. It all paid off tonight, years in the making, and finally he gets that first checkered flag. It's, it's great to see somebody get their first victory in that modified division. Great job for Chris Kaye. Sportsman Division, win number one of 2010 goes to Jamie Bigor. And Bigor was really hooked on the inside of the racetrack. Uh, other races this season, Jamie has tried to run on the outside of the track, always hasn't had a lot of success, and it's opened up the inside line for some of the faster cars uh, to work by on the inside. And uh, they came back after having the week off last week, all the cars in the Janus Steel Sportsman Division came back with a little bit of a different setup, got the car to really hook down on the inside of the racetrack, and you could tell in the practice that he was turning some of the fastest times on the uh, scoring monitor. You could tell in practice that he was going to be a car to contend with tonight. And he certainly was really hooked up down on the inside of the track. And he scored his first victory of the year. Chad Provost has quickly become a, becoming a star in the Renegade wow, division. He sure is. I mean, uh, really a solid race car working for him wherever he wants to put that car. And uh, the Renegade division really close. Uh, Lonnie Rivers unofficially probably losing the points uh, lead tonight to uh, Lance Raptoy. Both top point guys uh, involved in the yellow flag incidents that sent them to the back of the pack, and they both had to come back towards the front. Uh, but I believe Lance Raptoy unofficially will go into next week as the new point leader. The top three in victory lane in the mini-modified main event looked like a visit to Donor World. Rick Donor second, Justin Donor third, and the other part of that team, Stephen Brissett, the winner. Stephen Brissett was able to win by about four car lengths over Rick Donor. He, he had an idea that Rick was going to be charging up uh, late in the race, but he was, man he, able he was able to keep him in the rearview mirror, and uh, Stephen Brissett with his second victory. 30 laps for the Bombers tonight. Bill Joyle said in victory lane it wasn't easy, but it looked easy. Bill Joyle needed how many? About six? He didn't need all 30. Six in the race was pretty much over with, uh, barring some type of mechanical failure or breakdown. Uh, and he said the car started to go away a little bit on him in the final stages of that race. Well, when you're leading by a full front stretch, the car can more than go away. You can just about go get a, uh, a, a Happy Meal at the, in the fast food line and, uh, and come back and still have the lead, and he was able to do that. Award time, Watson Glass, Driver of the Week. It's pretty much unanimous. It's Chris K.A. Chris K.A. getting his first victory in the Ernie's Discount Tools Modifieds in his career and uh, well-deserved an easy choice tonight for the Driver of the Week. The Frenier's Automotive Service and Towing Award, the Hard Charger. My vote goes to Rick Doner. I'll go with Lance Rabtoy, who managed to uh, uh, rally and take the point lead away from Lonnie Rivers, coming from deep in the field to get, uh, I, I want, it was either fifth or sixth where he finished. So I'll take Lance Rabtoy and the Renegades. Tie-breaking vote goes to Gene Gagne, who votes for? Rick Doner is the winner of the Frenier's Automotive Service and Towing Hard Charger Award. We want to thank Gene Gagne for his video from OutsideGroove.com as well as our underwriters, Ormsby Realty and Adirondack Water Systems. For Rob Knowles, I'm Rick Knowles. Hope you enjoyed the program, and we'll see you next Saturday night with Motorsports Magazine from the Airborne Speedway in Plattsburgh.